Hello everyone and welcome to the Boxicle. Today's topic is superheroes. Yes, I do mean those people who jump around in caves fighting crime. And no, sadly we will not be talking about Adam West Batman from the 1960s. In the next seven-ish minutes, we'll be speaking about how superheroes change from the absurdly dressed role models for children and young people to the dark and violent characters we see today. Now I'm sure most of you watching this from your couch would have seen at least one, or all, of the recent popular superhero movies, and you'd be sitting there watching this thinking, This guy is ridiculous! Superheroes are way better the way they are now! Well let me ask you this, is that the way we've been brought up to think? Have superheroes changed to match the way we think? Or have the movies changed the way we think? I'm Ollie Oldenburg, and this is The Box. Okie dokie, time for the first example. Introducing Zack Snyder's Justice League, aka the Snyder Cut. Okay, so the full movie comes out on March 18th and this was filmed on the 12th so we couldn't use the movie itself. But I want to speak about how the heroes of the Justice League of America were represented in this particular trailer. So first off, we have Superman, the first hero to ever be created, the one guy in the cape that absolutely everybody knows, also known as Clark Kent. Whoops, did I spoil something? Okay, so these images of Superman that you've been seeing so far are all the classic Superman from all the comics and past movies. This is the Snyder Cut version. Look at that! The first thing I think of is, What the f have you done to Superman? No, of course I don't think that. But just look at him, he looks angry or in pain, like some sort of power surge or overload occurred. This image shows Superman in a black and silver outfit last seen on the villain, General Zod, in the Superman solo movie. Turning classic heroes evil is very concerning. Sure, it makes a good plot twist, but think about how it impacts society. Superman is an iconic role model for children all around the globe. Turning him evil just ruins that. Superman is a symbol of hope, protection, peace. Not evil. Some of you may think evil Superman is cool, but that's exactly the point. Being evil is not cool. Okay, moving on to Batman. No, not Adam West, this is Ben Affleck. Not only is it Ben Affleck's version of Batman with the pitch black suit, but this time it's Nightmare Batman. Just look at the way he looks, and now compare that with Adam West. Look at that. Whatever happened to the good old Batman, he never actually punched anyone without a bam image censoring the screen. And now we have Batman killing Superman? Again, what the f have you done? You know, when my friend watched Batman The Dark Knight for the first time, and Batman showed up in his full armor, he said, Is that the villain? Well, not really, because everyone knows who Batman is, but in theory, that's how bad it can get. Anyway, we don't have time to speak about the rest of the Justice League, but they all have the same outraged expressions and it scenes of destruction almost the whole way through the trailer, if you want to see for yourself. But think about how evil Superman destroys the motto of hope brought by the original Superman. Think about how Batman teaches kids to be dark and angry. Think about how Wonder Woman teaches young girls to dress. Anyway, moving on. Anyone ever watched Spider-Man Homecoming? What should I say? Is there anyone who hasn't? In this case, it's better if you haven't because this next image will freak you out even more. I'm going to show you an image of your favourite bug-eyed friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. Except this time, he's not so friendly. Bingo! You guessed it. It's instant kill mode Spider-Man. Creepy, right? Okay, we all know this was a joke written into the movie, but it's a big step from the original Spider-Man. One of Spider-Man's characteristic traits is that he refuses to kill even under the most immense pressure. The fact that he even has instant kill mode available in his suit makes the character feel a whole lot different. Instead of kids playing around with Spider-Man toys saying things like, It's not right to kill! They'll be saying things like, 
Instant kill mode. Activate. Plus, Spider-Man with low red laser points for eyes is pretty scary in itself. And look, just because Spider-Man was in a way that instant kill mode existed, think about what that says for Iron Man, the creator of the suit. What was his reason for creating an insta kill function? Moving on. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with WandaVision. If you're not past episode 4, shame on you. Spoiler alert, please click away. Now, we who are past episode 4 all know that WandaVision started out all cheery and sitcom -y, and now we are left trembling in our seats waiting to see what happens to Wanda in the future. But I want to bring your attention to one scene in particular from episode 4 we interrupt this program. Zombie vision. Yes I know. Revolting. Marvel would never have allowed this to air a few years ago, but apparently now it's A-OK. -okay. First off, gross. Secondly, gross. Lastly, <laughs> Why, Vision? Why? Don't mind me, I'm just lamenting. Okay, but back to the topic. This scenario is sort of like the Superman thing, how they get one main hero that everyone loves and turns them evil. Except this time he's not evil, he's just zombified. If it's even possible for a robot to be a zombie. Anyway, this ruins Vision's representation for kids, and maybe for me as well. Sure, zombies are considered to be cool in our modern society, but really? They're not. Especially when you take a cherished character who's supposed to be an icon of justice and fairness and the benefit of being a human as opposed to a robot and turn them into a clear-eyed undead zombie. Not only would this scare some kids, but it also makes Vision a whole lot less relatable and a lot less like a hero fighting for good. And ultimately, draws out all the messages he had come to represent. Vision's character lost all his meaning in less than two seconds. Out of all the children who've seen that scene, I don't know any whose favourite character is still Vision. There you have it. How superheroes started off as weirdly dressed people doing heroic deeds, and have since become walking weapons of war. From Adam West Batman series to Ben Affleck in Justice League, from the humorous Spider-Man from the comics to the Peter Parker suit is programmed to kill. From the comedically serious and uncanny vision from the comics to the horrifying zombie vision. See what they've become? I urge you, mend the superhero genre, restore them to what they were designed to be, show the media that we, as the audience, don't need all the overly violent and dark scenes in order to enjoy the movie. And I'm not saying we should dress Henry Cavill up in bright blue and red right through Superman tights. <laughs> I'm Wally Alderberg. This has been The Boxicle.